Hello, this is Mike Lively, and this is the last of three videos on building an interactive uh, Spark carousel. And what we're going to do today is we're going to actually uh, talk briefly once again about the instantiation process and show you how to add interactivity. You see a roll here, and when you actually click on something, the alpha fades. And then finally, we have a little of a decay slide on this slider bar. You see it keeps sliding just a little bit when you let go. We're going to show you how to do that as well. So let's get to it. I just want to cover the instantiation process real quick in case you missed that because basically we talked about building classes last time. There's actually three steps to instantiating something. It's first you have to create its class and we actually created two classes last time. And that was a bitmap group and a bitmap group two. And one uses embed images and the other basically brought the images in dynamically. We'll look at the one that brings images in dynamically today. Not much different. So in, so after you create your class, you have to import your class. So in the code, what we do is basically import the uh, classes. Now you got a little star here. Uh, some people see that as dangerous. It just depends. Uh, you can get messed up on your naming. You want to use these stars uh, sparingly, but you know if, but if you're not afraid of name conflicts, it's not an issue. Uh, so once you've actually brought the class and imported it, you just need to instantiate, declare it. So let me go down in the code just a little bit. So in this loop where I actually uh, um, iterate 16 times to get all my uh, pieces in, I actually do a simple decoration right here. I just use the var, give it a name, and declare uh, basically the uh, group that I imported. And that equals new and brings in the string, uh, basically, which is the... Uh, and that brings in the string, which is basically the name of the image. And let's just take a look at the images folder real quick here again. Over here is my images folder in assets. And you can see how they're named, and I actually did the string such that uh, it calls that particular name. So that's all there is to instantiating. Now, what I want to do is add interactivity. So let's go down a little bit. And what I do is I call this create listeners right here. There you go. And what that create listeners does is it uh, fires this method right here. And uh, it takes all the names in the particle array and adds a listener to them. It actually adds three listeners to them. I have a mouse click listener, a mouse roll out listener, and a mouse roll over listener. And those particular listeners I have to have methods for. And then I just define what I want to happen inside those methods. So let's take a look at that. So for my rollover listener, all I do is add a glow. And for my rollout listener, what I do is I remove the glow just by setting it equal to null. And then for my click listener, what I do, very simple, is I just essentially go, well, what's the alpha? If it's 1, use tween light to change the alpha to 0.2. So we change the alpha to 0.2. Or, you know, else if alpha is not 1, so if alpha is not 1, then we change it back to 1. Really simple code. And that's all there is to the interactivity. You might want to just take a look at this glow statement right here. What I have to do, see how it's in that bracket? It's kind of a funny looking uh, statement. You just go, the event that I clicked on, it's current object, add a filter, and that's equal to glow. Let's just take a look at that real quick. So if I pan back up here where I declare the glow, you see I have to come along here and I have to have my filters. So I, do, I import the filter statement. And here's the glow method right here. Just really simple. And the way you learn about these particular filters and what the parameters are that you need is you just look that up in the documentation. Another trick is to do this. It's just when you begin to start to type the filter in this parenthesis, when you hit that parenthesis, all the parameters that you need for that filter will come up. And you just kind of just figure that out and play around with them. Pretty much you learn this stuff by just playing around with them. Okay, we're getting close to being done. We have one more topic, and that is uh, the uh, slider. Now what I want to do is I want to put a little physics in my slider so that when it when you push it over it doesn't just stop abruptly but it slides a little bit more. And so I need to know the old value and the new value. So I have to have some type of mouse interaction here. So what I've done, I've actually declared just a few little parameters here. One is what I call my old slide and one is called is what I call delta. That delta, if it's positive or negative, will tell me which direction to, to continue my slide. The old value is just the original number, and then I subtract that from the new slide value. So let's go back to the code. So in order to get a slider on the stage, you want to go to Components. And you need to be in Design View. And you just look for a slider component. 
and there's a horizontal one and there's a vertical one, and you just drag that slider component to the stage and let go of it, and it's on the stage. Now, let me just say something real quick about this. Uh, if you want to skin these components and make them look a lot better, I typically do that in Flash Catalyst. Okay, once you have that slider on the stage, here's my slider right here, is that you can go and program that. So I clicked on it so it would be highlighted, so I'll go to Source, and let's go down and take a look at my slider. And here it is right here, highlighted. And I can set a minimum value and a maximum value. So you want to make sure you do that. There's my maximum, there's my minimum. That's where I start. My value equals zero. And then con let's continue. And I give it a name so I can access it. That's, that's my ID. And then I constrain it. I've actually constrained it to the top. So I spoke a little bit about constraints. And I create a, a thumb release method and a change method. And those are both very important. And so... Uh, the way you do constraints, let's go back to design. I constrained this to the top. So the way I did that is I just went over here to properties. And you scroll down to the bottom of properties, you have this little constraint panel here. So this actually allows me to constraint to the top or bottom just by clicking uh, these different values. So I can actually move it to the bottom if I want it. And then I can actually put a spacing value in here as well. And you can see I constrained this to the center. Uh, just 38 pixels below the top. So that's how you do a constraint. That can become very useful when you start moving things around. You always want something to be there. So that's how I did that constraint. So let's finish up the uh, discussion. I have my release thumb here and I have my uh, accelerator here. Now what you'll notice is at the top of the code I've actually set that uh, slide value to zero initially because I don't want it to you know get a null value when I start the initiation. So down in my release uh, method, so whenever I release the thumbnail, I actually reset that old value to wherever the slider was. And so what it does, it takes the value of the slider and the change handler, and it basically uh, subtracts those two and gives me a delta. And that delta will be negative or positive depending on the direction of my slider. So what I do next is pretty simple. What I do is just tween based upon my delta value. So it'll tween a little bit more negative or a little bit more positive just with a small uh, uh, 0.25 seconds. So if you wanted to tween longer, you can actually change this value right here, this, uh, and it will change how long it tweens. And I just made it short, just, but I didn't want it just to just stop and, and not um, just stop abruptly. So that's why I put the tween in there. And that's pretty much all there is to this application. Let's run it one more time. Uh, there you go. You just slide along, and it just slides just a little bit, you know, just so it doesn't stop abruptly. And you got your alpha. When you click on it, it goes to alpha. And you have your rollovers that give you that glow. And when you roll off, the glow goes away. So I hope you uh, get something from this. And I'm actually going to be putting up a data-driven website next. So you we're going to take all this stuff that we've been talking about and put it all together here in the next uh, series. Thanks for listening. This was Mike Lively.